Islam is the religion which has shown the relationship between Khalik, the creator, and Makhluk, the creation. Islam has taught us that our relationship with the creator is direct. There is no one in between. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Qaf, Surah 50, Ayat number 16. Allah says, I am closer to you than your jugular السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ ان الحمدللہ نحمده ونستعینه ونستغفره ونعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا ومن سیئات عمالنا من یهده اللہ فلا مدل له ومن یدلل فلا حادی له واشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له واشہد ان محمد عبد رسول اما بعد فإن خیر الحدیث کتاب اللہ وخیر الحدی حدی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وکل محدثت بدعا وکل بدعت دولالا وکل دولالت فی النار وقال تعالی فی کلامه المجید اليوم اکملت لکم دینکم واتممت علیکم نیمتی ورضیت لکم الاسلام دینا رب شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امری وحل لغدتا من لسانی یفقہو قولی Respected Brothers on the dais علماء my dear brothers and sisters, my subject for this evening's talk is the cancer of the Muslim Ummah. We all Muslims should feel for one another because the Prophet said that the believers are like jasadin wahidin, like one body. If one part is in pain, the whole body is restless. Now, what is the cancer of the Muslim Ummah today? We all will see in the light of the Quran and the Sunnah, inshallah. And my dear brothers and sisters, I seriously believe and I'm requesting and inviting all of you that all of us can, inshallah, be a part of the solution. The cancer today of the Ummah is that, yes, we have the Quran. The Quran is safe. 1400 years have passed. Not one word has changed from the Quran as it is as the Prophet ﷺ left behind. We have the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ preserved. Not only are the sayings of the Prophet ﷺ preserved, even the narrators who are narrating the hadith of the Prophet from the chain of narration, more than 6,40,000 narrators, their lives are also preserved, that too with chain of narration. This is a preserved religion we live on. Our case is not like that of other religions. For example, we find the Bible that is read today. Now, we ask our Christian brothers that is this the Bible Jesus gave? Was it in English? So they say no, the Bible which Jesus gave was not in English. It was in Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, the Old Testament, the New Testament were in various languages but the original script is not there next to the, the English translation the original text is missing so we say where is the original text they inform us that yes we have manuscripts we have manuscripts of the original text available they have more than 2000 different manuscripts no two are identical the Quran whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Asia, whether it's in Africa, whether it's in Gulf, whether it's in India, everywhere the Quran is the same. It's the same. This is a preserved religion. Yes, it is. But, my dear brothers and sisters, the sad part today is, since many Muslims lack knowledge, and when they lack knowledge, this cancer has crept in. And I want to share it with great feeling, with the hope that we all can do something to become a part of the solution. 
the cancer today is that though islam is preserved we have non muslims who are trying to malign islam by misrepresenting the teachings of islam but on the other hand we also have so many of our own brothers since they don't have knowledge about the quran knowledge about the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they end up following something which is not a part of religion and this has taken away the attraction that is there in original islam see my dear brothers and sisters allah rabbul alamin before he sent every human being in this world he created all of them and he made them testify alastu bi rabbikum am i not your lord and everyone has given the testimony qalu bala shahidna that yes we give the witness every single person on the face of this earth whether he is of any religion any background he has testified before allah now there is attraction in islam it's the religion of fitra however when there are manipulations and changes the original attraction is lost people don't understand the difference for example islam is the religion which has shown the relationship between khaliq the creator and makhluq the creation islam has taught us that our relationship with the creator is direct there is no one in between it's mentioned in the quran in surah qaf surah 50 ayat number 16 allah says i am closer to you than your jugular vein yes he is closest to us we ask allah rabbul alamin directly Allah says in the Quran in Surah 40 verse 60 Ud'uni astajib lakum ask me I will answer your prayers now this is the attraction however this is lost when people ask others and they say li yuqarribuna ila Allahi zulfa so that they may bring us closer to Allah the very same words with the mushriks of Makkah had said in the past as recorded in the Quran as mentioned in the Quran in Surah Zumar Surah 39 ayat number 3 or as mentioned in surah yunus surah 10 ayat number 18 how la shufauna in allah they intercede before us before allah they intercede for us before allah so now these were the words of the mushriks of makkah but due to lack of knowledge many of our own brothers they end up saying these words today so how is the attraction of the religion of fitra there it's not there we are also to be blamed we continuously blame the media but this cancer which is there is also to be blamed and my dear brothers and sisters we will all now inshallah discuss about this this cancer is innovating in the religion of allah innovations see did muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam give any talk on the mic did he have any cameras projector no muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not have an amplifier system like this we are using an amplifier system So some people say why are you using these innovations why are you using these innovations when you go to for hajj you sit on the camel and go for hajj so i want to share with you the answer of this question so inshallah i don't want to talk too many things but i want to talk something which if you are with me inshallah you will know the main main points when you go out i want to take five questions and five answers five points and a very important explanation so now we look at the first question they say that see stop using this technology stop using this technology stop using your mobile you don't need mobile muhammad sallam did not have mobile why you want mobile see the answer is very simple who made the mobile man made the mobile maybe the man in the future will make a better mobile than this yes we can see it maybe the future man the human being in the future will make a better mobile than this but who made deen allah taala allah's deen is perfect it was perfect 1400 years back it is perfect now it will be perfect even in the future deen has been given to us by allah rabbul alamin let us understand the usul allah says in the quran in surah al baqara surah 2 verse 29 Allah says Allahu alladhi khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi jamia Allah is the one who has created for you all that is on earth Allah says I have created for you my dear brothers this question which I mentioned may be somebody may ask you this question and as I said we all have been called the khaira umma the best umma 
because Allah says tamruna bil maruf wa tanhauna anil munkar you enjoin what is right and you forbid what is wrong surah al imran surah 3 verse 10110 so we have to be part of this amr bil maruf and nahi anil munkar so when someone asks you the question if you are little bit attentive inshallah you can answer the principle is simple allah says i have created for you khalaqa lakum ma fil ardi jamia whatever is on the earth i have created for you now on the earth we find the mobile on the earth we find the mic on the earth we find all of this on the earth we find the aeroplane the computer everything is on the earth khalaqa lakum i have created for you but on the earth we also find alcohol so allah has created clearly mentioned that alcohol is haram so the rule when we look at worldly matters is that everything is halal everything is halal what is haram has been clearly mentioned that pork is haram now someone says which hadith it's mentioned that you can have a shawarma or a burger or a pizza the point is khalaqa lakum i have created for you so allah has created for us now my dear brothers and sisters the answer is simple in worldly matters everything is halal what is haram is clearly mentioned but when we come to religion when we come to deen how should we do ibadat of allah now if someone says that to worship allah i will tie my hands on the head will it do no now the rule is different and i want to share with you the adilla the proofs and inshallah five proofs if all of us are together in the attempt to memorize this inshallah by the time we go out all of us will know these five points so that someone tells you that in religion also we should bring in new things religion needs to be changed we need to bring in new things in religion so then every single one of us can give the answer the answer is in religion in ibadat everything is haram only what is proven only that is halal what is proven from the quran from the sayings of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam only that is halal everything else is haram so we look at the proofs proof number 1 from surah maida surah number 5 verse number 3 easy to learn surah number 5 verse number 3 and i encourage you to learn the reference do you know why so that you can go and check so can so that you can tell someone else to check and there was a time when people were so connected with the quran that you didn't have to tell them where it is in the quran they knew it's in the quran i know where it is but now people are far from the quran they don't know what is in the quran so we have to give them the full address just as i'm not from kuwait i've come from mumbai for this program so now i don't know where is farwania grounds a person from kuwait will know farwania grounds okay okay i know you don't have to give him the full address google map location but for outsider you have to give him full address so people who have gone outside the quran we have to give them full address it's in surah maida surah al maida surah number 5 verse number 3 so we go there we see allah rabbul alamin has said al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum this day i have completed for you your religion i have completed for you your religion akmaltu lakum deenakum wa tumamtu alaykum ni'mati and i have completed my favor upon you wa raditu lakum al islam deena and i have chosen for you islam as your religion my dear brothers in islam my dear sisters in islam what has allah said akmaltu lakum deenakum i have completed your religion for you i'd like to give you an example see this is a bottle of water now you can see it's this much full and this much empty you can put water in this you can put water in this but if it is completely full and then someone says it's full i can yet put more water in it so then you will say it must not have been full if you can put more water then it was not full if it is full you cannot put more water now when when people say that yes you can bring new things in religion so they have made a allegation against allah that allah said that religion is complete akmaltu lakum deenakum but really it was not complete 
That is the reason more things could go inside. If more can go inside, then it is not complete. If it is complete, new things cannot come in. So this is proof number one for today. I encourage all of my brothers, see my dear brothers in Islam. If you become the source of guidance for anyone, if through you someone understands the correct religion, then what will happen? He will do the good thing and inshallah you will get a copy of the reward. Sunan Abu Daud, there's an authentic hadith where the Prophet Muhammad said, Man dalla ala khairin, falahu ajru mithli failihi. Whoever shows the right way, he will get the reward equal to the one who does it. Equal to the one who does it. The person who shows, he will get the reward equal to the one who does it. Alhamdulillah. So this is first proof for today. Surah number 5. Let's have a revision. Surah number 5, verse number 3. Inshallah, you'll, you'll remember. Number 1. Number 2. We come to a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's in Sahih Bukhari, volume three, hadith number eight sixty one. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man ahdatha fi amrina hada ma laysa minhu fa huwa rad." Whoever brings in this religion something which is not a part of it, it is rejected. Fa huwa rad. It is rejected. Now you bring in something new in religion. You bring in something which is not from the Quran, from not from the authentic sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then what will happen? Fahua rad. It is rejected. My dear brothers, all of us, we will stand before Allah. Whether you like it or you don't like it, whether a person believes in it or does not believe in it, every single person will be raised back to life, and every person has to stand before Allah, and deeds will be measured. On one side all good deeds, on the other side all bad deeds. Now bad deeds are there for sure. But for something to be good, it has to be there in the Quran and the sayings of the Prophet If it is something which is not a part of it and we have brought in something new, what will happen? It is rejected. I encourage you if you can learn this much. See, learn the full hadith later inshallah. I will share the notes with some brothers on Bluetooth before I go. PDF notes. But, but try to learn it right now, inshallah. Fahua rad, it is rejected. So if someone says to you, as people say in our country today, and so many people in the world, they say there are two types of bidah. New things in religion, there are two types. They say there's something called good bidah, and there's something called bad bidah. Good bidah, good innovation, and there's something called bad bidah. However, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu did not say that. He said, Fahuwarad, it is rejected. If it is something new, it is directly rejected. So you can answer the question, inshallah. This is a hadith in Bukhari. So now some people say, they say, no, no. What does the hadith say? Man ahdatha. Whoever removes something new in religion, remove something new in religion. They say, we didn't remove. We didn't remove. People before us have removed. We are only doing them. So there's another hadith in Sahih Muslim. Amada Aisha radiallahu anha. She narrates, Man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fahuwarad. Whoever does something which is not a part of religion, it is rejected. It is rejected. My dear brothers and sisters, very sad state of the ummah today. Firstly, people are away from religion. They are away from amal. They are into sins and following of desires. And when they do things, when they do some religious actions, they do bidah, innovation, which is fahuwarad rejected. So now this is a very sad state. So this hadith, Allah Rasul Muhammad did not say who has removed. He said, you're doing man amil amalan. Those who do something, whoever does an action, which is not a part of the original from the Quran, from the Sunnah, fahuwarad, it is rejected. Don't we want that our deeds should be safe? Don't we want to get rewards? Won't you want to see the weight on the day of judgment? Do we want to see it is rejected? So my dear brothers in Islam, this is the sad state of our ummah today. So this is the second proof for today. It is rejected. Fahuwarad. You remember this inshallah? The first proof was Surah Maida, Surah 5, verse number 3. Second proof is Fahuwarad. Huh? You can inshallah repeat with me, you'll, you'll know it inshallah. Not difficult at all. Fahuwarad. It is rejected. 
थर्ड प्रूफ द हदीस फ्रॉम सही मुस्लिम हदीस नंबर 1885 जाबिर रदलाउ ही नरेट्स काना रसूलुल्लाह ही सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि सल्लम इधर ख़त्बा द प्रॉफ़िट सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि सल्लम व्हेनेवर ही वुड गिव अ टॉक व्हेनेवर ही वुड गिव अ ख़त्बा ही वुड से इन इट एंड ही सेड द हदीस फ्रॉम देम आर द वर्ड्स ओनली थ्री वर्ड्स थ्री वर्ड्स आई आई एम कोटिंग टुडे टू मेक इट इजी टू लर्न कुल्लू बिद अतिन दलाला ही डिड नॉट से गुड बिदा ओके बैड बिदा बैड ही सेड कुल्लू बिद अतिन ऑल द बिदास ऑल द न्यू थिंग्स इन रिलीजन व्हाट एवर न्यू कम्स इन रिलीजन इट्स न्यू इट्स नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ ओरिजिनल फहुआ रद कुल्लू बिद अतिन दलाला एवरी बिदा इज दलाला दलाला डिविएशन Every bid'a is dalala. The word dalala. Can you tell me where does the word dalala come in Surah Al-Fatiha? Dalala, dalin, ha? Ghair al-Maqdoob alayhim wala dalin. O Allah, not the way of those on whom is your wrath, not the way of the dalin, those who go astray. Who are these? We find the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "Maqdoob alayhim ada." Jews and Dalin are the Christians. So Jews and Christians. If you look at Christians, they have lot of bidas in their religion. You know, they have monasticism. They won't marry. Why? To make Allah happy. Yes, their intention is good. They want to make Allah happy. But Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Hadid, Surah 57, Ayat number 27, Wa Rahman ya Tabta Dauha Ma Katabna Ha Alayhim. The monasticism which they introduce, ruhbaniyat, monasticism. I did not tell them to do. They don't marry. They stay separate. Allah says, I did not tell them to do. So this is what bida. So now we say dali, not the way of the dali, meaning not the way of those who did all of these new things in religion. So this is the third evidence for today. Hadith of Sahih Muslim. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would do give khutbah, he would say, and if you are one of the registered. Registered people in Salah. You know who are the registered people in Salah? They are unregistered people in Salah, and they are registered people in Salah. People who come before the Imam starts the khutbah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, on the gates of the masjid, the angels stand with the register, and they make an entry of everyone who's coming, and there's a reward. So if you are a registered Friday musalli who's coming early. Before the khutbah starts, so you will hear every Juma. Kullu bidatin dolala. Kullu bidatin dolala. This is the third evidence for today. Fourth evidence. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah 49, verse number one. Ya ayuha ladina amanu, O you who believe, la tu qadimu bayna yadi Allahi wa Rasuli wa taqulah. Do not put yourself forward before Allah and His Messenger. Don't put yourself ahead before Allah and His Messenger. What the kulla fear Allah? What's the matter? See, my dear brothers, do you know that we have to do ittiba of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? We have to follow the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Itaat is obedience. Ittiba is follow. Follow the Prophet. I'll give you an example. Suppose from Farvania, you need to go to some other location, and there are two cars, two drivers. One driver knows the address; second driver does not know the address. So what will you do? You will tell the driver who knows the address that do one thing: you drive ahead, and who doesn't know the address, you will say you go behind. You don't know the address, you go behind. When he goes right, you go right. When he goes left, you go left. When he goes straight, you go straight. So now we are the ones behind. We don't know the way, and Allah showed the way to the beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and He has been shown the way, and we have been told you follow the Prophet. You follow the Prophet. Now the one behind, he says, why should I be behind? I want to go in the front. So he doesn't know the way, but he wants to overtake and go in the front. Then what will happen? He'll get lost. Dolala. You go astray. So now Allah says, "La tu qadimu bayna yada illahi wa rasuli." Don't put yourself forward before Allah and His Messenger. What taqulla fear Allah? 
See my dear brothers in Islam, we do ittiba of a Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. A believer should always check that are the footsteps of footsteps of the Prophet before him in all matters of religion or not. For example, somebody has died in the family. Now you know when somebody dies, our hearts become soft. We want to do amal. We have a realization that I am also going to die. So what people do? If you don't have knowledge and you have lot of jazba, if you want to drive fast but you don't know the way, you go further and further away from the goal. What we need to know is that only jazba is not enough. So now, my dear brothers, I'm saying with very sad state, in a very with with very, I feel we feel sad for our umma. Is that is this a new masala? Is this that people have started dying today and they used to not die the, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Is this a new issue that for these times we have to solve this issue, or has this happened in the past? So we find it has happened in the past. People died that time also. What did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do? What did the Sahaba do? We should also do that. It's an example. We have one janaza training program. At the end of it, we have made the list of bidas in janaza. We in Bombay from our dawa center. So we have a list of 150 bidas when a person dies until after the burial. If a person doesn't have knowledge, he'll do at least 25, 30 bidas. So this is the sad state. When you get lots of jazba and you don't have knowledge, this is what will happen. So now our fourth point is: don't put yourself forward before Allah and His Messenger. The fourth point is ittiba. A person who does bidah, he is not doing ittiba. He is away from ittiba. And the reference is easy to learn. Forty-nine plus one is fifty. Surah forty-nine, verse one. Surah forty-nine, verse one. Don't put yourself forward before Allah and His Messenger. So if you find someone who says it is good to do bidah, you should have all your points ready. Point number one. Surah Fai, verse number three. Second point, Fahua, Rad. Third point, Kullu, Bidatin, Dalala. Inshallah, you will say with your mouth, brothers. You will open your mouth for Allah. People open their mouths for money. In your job, you will open your mouth. In your business, you open your mouth. But for Allah, are we ready to open our mouths? We are we ready to save someone? See, he is putting energy. But he is not earning out of it. So this is the third point. Kullu bidatin dalala. Fourth point. Don't put yourself forward before Allah and His Messenger. He is not doing ittiba. If the Prophet did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do the bidah? Did the Prophet do the bidah? If he did the bidah, then it's not a bidah. If the Prophet did it, it's not a bidah. Why is it a bidah? Because Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not do it. So Surah forty nine verse one. Last fifth point. And then we go to the second part of the talk. Fifth point is a scene from the Day of Judgment. It's mentioned in the Sahih Bukhari in no less than seven places. We are seeing the Hadith in Volume Five, Hadith Number Five Eighty Five. This Hadith is called Hadith e Haws. It's about the Haws e Kausar, the Al Kausar, the Haws Al Kausar of Al Kausar. Is the place where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Ana faratu kumal al haws." I will be the first person who will reach the haws. Faman varada hu shariba min hu. Whoever comes there will drink from it. Waman shariba min hu lam yazma abada hu abada. Whoever drinks from it will not feel thirsty after that ever again. La yaridu alayya qawmun. Some people will come towards me. Aarifu hum wa yarifuni. I will recognize them. They will recognize me. According to another hadith, we come to know the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will recognize them from the places of wuzu. The places of wuzu will be shining. The places of sajda will be shining. These will be Muslims who used to do wuzu, who used to offer salah. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Arifuhum wa yarifuni." They will recognize me. They will recognize the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thumma yuhalu bayni wa baynahu. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "They will be stopped from coming to me." Those people will be stopped from coming to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fakul, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will say, "Inna hum minni, they are my followers." He's rahmatullahi alamin. He will say, "They are my followers. Why are you stopping them?" So my yuqal, it will be said, "Inna kalatadri ma ahdathu badak." 
you don't know what new things they have done in religion when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will come to know that these are the people who have done new things in religion he will say sukhan sukhan liman ghayra ba'di go away go away or those people who have done new things after me liman badala ba'di fi riwayatin according to another hadith people who have changed the religion after me so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rahmatullahil alamin on the day of judgment he is going to say to these people sukhan sukhan liman ghayra ba'di go away go away my dear brothers can you imagine these people will be sent away thirsty the day of judgment the day of thirst they will be thirsty ever after can you imagine such a serious punishment for them and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is angry with them you will find many people who do bidas they do bidas to please allah they do bidas out of the love of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i wish our brothers would know that you don't get the love of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by do, doing new things in religion you get the love of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by doing his ittiba so now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is angry and the words are which i request all of you that you can learn this much see learn the full hadith later inshallah and if you already know it alhamdulillah very good but learn this much now so you can tell someone suqan suqan liman ghayra ba'di go away go away dur ho jao dur ho jao or those who have brought in new things after me you brought in new things in religion these are five points and i think it's sufficient for our basic conversation however brothers now there's a big problem there are two types of people who do bidas first type are those people who say that there are good bidas and they do bidas and the second type are those who say it is bad to do bida it is wrong to do bida yet they do bida they say it is wrong to do bida yet they do bida now why is it like this because many people don't know how to identify bida how to identify bida bida doesn't come with a red flag i am a bida it doesn't come with horns on the head that this is a bida we have to learn how to identify this is a bida this is something new in religion i don't want new i want original see i'll give you an example i'll give you an example you have the currency in kuwait now if someone says i will make a better design than this note i will use still better quality paper better quality paper better design and i will bring my own note will it work why it won't work it's not the note introduced by the government what will work is the note given by the government a layman doesn't have the option that okay i can do no so you are doing something you think it's very good but is it from the quran from the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if it has the seal of the quran and the sunnah on it it is accepted otherwise for whoever that is rejected some people they say this is see we are doing something extra we are doing something more ha huh? something more we are doing we are not doing something less if a person does bida he is doing something extra so this is see we are doing extra what is wrong in doing extra what's wrong i'll give you an example if you are having tea and the sugar is less and you want sugar so what will you say put some sugar in this no someone covered comes with a handful of sugar and puts sugar take you want sugar sugar what will we say no the formula has gone bad you are having food salt is less this is salt is less someone comes with a handful of salt you want salt take salt we'll say you spoil the food how much sugar should be there that much sugar how much salt should be there that much salt this we can understand isn't it this we can understand but in religion they don't understand how much should be there that much we have to do allah told that much through the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam someone has died so now people say 40 days have passed now you have to cook food see my dear brothers did somebody die at the time of the prophet yes they died did 40 days come after the death it came did the prophet do something then we will also do if he didn't do then we should not do because he is the best example we say he is our messenger we are doing his ittiba we are not doing it to bab someone else 
Like wise we have to see in every single thing in religion. Every single thing of our life we have to see this. So now my dear brothers, how much should be there? That much it should be there. In India, we have the PCO for public calls. So you have to put a one rupee coin. Now over here, uh, I, on the airport at least I saw that there were uh, free phone call machines. But suppose someone says, no, one rupee coin, I want to make a better call. I will put a 10 rupee note in it. It won't do. One rupee, you have to put one rupee. You have to follow the system. If you do extra for who are ad, it is rejected over there. Why they can't understand in religion? It's so simple. So now, my dear brothers, I want to give you in this program today seven types of bida. Seven types of bida. And if all of you are with me, inshallah, then you can easily learn the seven types now. Now, inshallah. See, one is the general type where anything which is new in religion is bida. So there are some practices which were not done by the Prophet ﷺ, by the Sahaba. People do it. So it is for who are rejected. But now there are some types which are dis difficult to identify. And I want to share with this, this with you so that first we should save our, ourselves. Then we should save our families, our relatives, our friends. We want to save them. We want to solve this cancer. We want to save our, all our deeds from going waste. So now the first type is when the time has been fixed for something in ibadah which has not been fixed by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Zaman, time, waqt. If time has been fixed, for example, we have times of salah five times a day. Hajj, when do we do hajj? The season of hajj. We go for, we keep fast in the month of Ramadan. When do we fast? In Ramadan, time has been fixed. Who has fixed it? From Allah. Allah says in the Quran in Surah 53, verse number 3, The Prophet doesn't speak from his desires. In yuha. This is a wahi sent to him. Whatever the Prophet ﷺ fixed, he fixed them under wahi. Now if someone comes and tells, like you will find many small books, that do this on every Thursday, do this on every Sunday, whichever day, every first Thursday. So now we say that, see, this is time. Who told you it is the first Thursday of every month? If you do this on every first Thursday of every month, you will get big sawab. Your problems will be solved. But my dear brothers in Islam, the problem is that this is religion. It has to come from the Prophet ﷺ. If it is not from the Prophet, Fahuwarad, it is rejected. Kullu bidatin dolala. All the bidas are dolala. Deviation. You do something and you get dolala. You do something and you get the anger of the Prophet. Suhkan, suhkan, liman gayyar abadi. You go away from the ittiba. Then you have put allegation against Allah that his deen is not complete. So the first time is, type is time. You'll remember, inshallah, time. Number one. Number two, number. Miqdar, number. The number that is given of something, it has to be from Allah or from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, we finish our first Salah and then we read Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. So now we have 33, 33, Allahu Akbar, we have a Hadith of 33 also, 34 also. Now, this number has been given by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Zuhar, in, the salah, in Salatul Zuhur, we, we offer four Akas first. In Fajr, we have two. Now Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam told this under wahi from Allah. He did not say, ah, char parlo and wa do parlo. No, this is under wahi from Allah. Guidance from Allah. Now if someone comes and tells you that, see, do this this many times. Huh? 1 lakh 24,000 24, times. 124,000 times. You read this. 1,000 times you read this. So now a person doesn't have the right to say it. Except when you are saying on the authority of our Prophet ﷺ because this is religion. In religion we are not allowed. Several people don't know this. No number can be fixed from our side. It has to come from Allah and His Messenger. So the number has to be from the Quran and the Sunnah. So now if someone says that read the Rood 12 times at 12 o'clock in the night. So now how many bidas are there in this? This is an example. How many bidas? How many? Two. Number one is twelve. From where have you got the number twelve? 
Why not 13? Why not 11? Where, from where you got the number 12? And why 12 o'clock? Why not 1 o'clock? Why not 12, 11 o'clock? So my dear brothers, people don't understand. They say, nah, this is religion. They just start doing. There's a law of jazba. And they say, see, my intention is good. Na? Intention is not enough. If your intention is not enough. If, for example, from Kuwait, you want to go to some, you want to go to Mumbai. And if a person books the flight for Europe, how much ever his intention is to go to Mumbai, he will not land in Mumbai. This we all know. Only intention is not enough. You have to catch the right flight also. You have to book the right flight. So now, my dear brothers in Islam, the point is that people don't understand this in religion. See, tell me, when the mushriks of Makkah, they used to say in Surah 39, it's mentioned, Surah Zumar, verse number 3, We worship these idols only so that they may bring us closer to Allah. So their intention was good or bad? They wanted to come closer to Allah, isn't it? So you want to come closer to Allah. But only intention is not enough. We also need to do the right actions. The Christians who did monasticism, who didn't marry, their intention was also to please Allah. But only intention is not enough. So first type is time. If you repeat, you'll memorize. Number one is time. Huh? Mashallah, some young voices I can hear. Number two is number. Time, number. See, seven are there. If you don't repeat, you will forget. By the time we reach seven, we'll say, what was the first? Huh? The first was time. Second is number. Third is place. Place. Like for example, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he fixed the place. Tawaf is at the Kaaba. Sa'i is between Safa and Marwa. Miqat, given points. Now you know in India, there are so many places where people do Tawaf. Yeah? Yeah, 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 and when you tell them that why are you doing tawaf, they say tawaf is proven. It's proven to do tawaf or no? Yes, it is proven. But the place is wrong. So now someone says, see, I don't have money to go for Hajj and Umrah. In my own city, I'll just go and take a big round from here, here, here. So will he get the sawab of tawaf? No, because the place is wrong. So the, even the place specified in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, that same place, we cannot give that you do what this. That you read Darud 12 times at 12 o'clock in the night after going on your terrace. Now, if someone says this, there are three bidas in this. See, it's an example for understanding. So, number one is time. Number two is number. Number three is place. Number four, material. Material. What material we are doing, that material also has to have sanction from the Quran and the Sunnah. For example, in the sacrifice of Eid, we can sacrifice the selected animals that are given in the Quran and the Sunnah. Now these days, people like chicken more. Yeah, I have noticed. So now if someone says that, how much a goat costs, how much a sheep costs, in that same cost, I will buy that many chickens. And I'll sacrifice them for Allah. Will it be accepted? Why? Because the material has changed. Similarly, some people say, they say that, see, that when they go for Hajj, you have to strike the stones on the Jamrat. So, some people from, especially from India, Pakistan, these areas, they come under a lot of anger. When they see the Jamrat, they get very angry. And they remove their shoes and chappals and they throw the chappals over there. You've seen? So now, is this good or bad? Why? Material has changed. Muhammad sallallahu did not say throw anything. He said you have to throw, throw the... He showed even the size of the pebbles. Like the chickpea. Kabuli chana it's called. That size. Huh? So now, my dear brothers, the material also has to be what is given in the Quran and the Sunnah. Fourth is material. The first is time. Number two is number. Number three is place. Number four is material. Number five, method. The method given by the Prophet wasallam, that same method has to be followed. So now, what we do, we have to do according to the method given by the Prophet wasallam. For example, there are some locations, and we see this commonly, and my dear brothers, I really tell you, that even these are brothers, and they really don't have knowledge. It's our duty to share with them, that see, my brother Kullu, Bidatin, 
dolala see my dear brother fahua rad we have to tell them al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum so we have to share with them suhqan suhqan liman ghayra ba'di you don't want to hear this we have to share with them they only don't know if you tell them alhamdulillah there are so many people you know one particular person he uh, one one elder aunty she used to attend our program so she said that see when i have come to know this so i came to know we used to get up at 12 o'clock in the night and we used to read this 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 for solving our problems so now i have come to know all of this is for huwa rad rejected so she saying that now i'm realizing there's so much time left for me now i have time to read the quran translation i have time to seek islamic knowledge earlier my full life was busy with bidah see so you know bidah you will find big big numbers 1 lakh 24000 now someone is reading 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 1 lakh 24000 he finished and on the day of judgment muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fa huwa rad rejected you know bidahs you will find big big numbers ha huh? you won't find small numbers generally because shaitan also knows how to make these people busy the umma of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they become busy in this and that is the cancer today it's spreading and we have to solve it with knowledge so now the fifth type which we are looking is method like you know some people they sit in some places and they move their necks allah allah move their necks round 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 so we tell them what is this they say that see we are doing allah allah what wrong we are doing we are doing shaitan shaitan we are doing allah allah what's wrong wrong is that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sahaba they did not do this if they did we will also do but when they didn't do and this is a matter of religion it's not a matter like your mic or your this bottled water ha huh? this is not a matter like this see now this design you can see this could have been rectangular no problem instead of cream color you want to put red color no problem in religious matters instead of this red carpet you want to put gray color carpet no problem but when it comes to religion you can't do you have to stick to what muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said because this is amana see you know what went wrong with jesus christ isa alaihi salam he had preached the religion of islam but today our christian brothers who are in numbers at least they say that they are more than us but these people are not on islam you know why due to bidas they changed the original religion the original religion is gone today so this is the same problem if it's affecting us also today due to lack of knowledge and we have to be part of the solution so my dear brothers this fifth problem is is when you the method is should be also the method of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know some people when they go for hajj so they go to the kaaba when they go back so they come back you know without turning the back ulte paon no they come back words outside they say i don't want to show my back to the kaaba but what is wrong this method is not from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did it we are behind our car is behind the prophet what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did doing that is the sunnah and what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not do not doing that is the sunnah what he did doing that is the sunnah what he didn't do not doing that is the sunnah in ibadah so when we come to this we've seen five types we come to the sixth revision first type time number number 3 place number 4 material number 5 method number 6 sabab cause now you see someone offering salah in the night you say every night to you don't offer salah why are you praying tonight so he says see see this is night is there no whatever night is there it has to have proof in the quran and the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam isn't it we find lailatul qadr is mentioned now if someone says that see this night prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did miraj he did the night journey so we are also awake so we say that see this is a matter of religion or it's a worldly matter it's a matter of religion so shouldn't we have the footsteps of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in front of us yes we should have the footsteps of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in front of us and if we don't have for who are it will be rejected isn't it so someone tells you that see i want to invite you for food say food ma ah, mashallah but every day you don't invite me for food what is the matter today so he says see somebody died in our family and today 40 days have passed so i'm just calling you because now 40 days have gone now this is the cause sabab cause why are you doing this today you could have done this any day why are you doing it today so the cause also has to be from the quran and from the sunnah see my dear brothers in islam i know 
that some brothers may have not heard this topic earlier some people may find it ke kya hai but i'll tell you see this is there in the quran it's in the in the, in the sayings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we only tell you go to the quran and the sunnah what is from there let us all do it what is not there let us all leave it let us all leave it so sixth type is sabab cause the cause waja should also be from the quran and the sunnah seventh and the last type we are seeing today is that tartib sequence the sequence should be also from the quran and the sunnah for example you see in wudu the sequence is given in the quran same sequence has to be maintained in salah same sequence has to be maintained so now if you change the sequence again it becomes a bidah now you say that i first did sajda then i then i did ruku no what sequence is given that sequence is changed it becomes a bidah what sequence is given that sequence also has to be maintained so my dear brothers in islam we have seen five points to inshallah answer and explain to our brothers who are active with their jazba in the field of doing bidahs and new things in religion we have seen seven types of bidah finally i will end with a verse from the quran in surah surah al kahf surah 18 was number 109 allah says qul tell them hal nunabbiukum bil aksarina amala should i tell you who is the one who is in biggest loss in matters of amal allah says who in matters of amal who has the biggest loss so allah says alladheena dalla sa'ihum fil hayati dunya those whose efforts were going vain in the dunya and they were thinking that they are doing something very good so now my dear brothers in islam what we need to say allah says that these are the people who have in biggest loss i'll give you an example for explaining and end the talk the example is suppose for example we have in bombay the railway and now there's an announcement a person is waiting on station number 1 that there's a train which is coming on platform number 3 person says the train is coming this can happen anywhere but i have seen this happening so i'm giving an example from bombay So now he says platform number three, the train is coming. He runs up the bridge. He runs down across the bridge. He runs down, and the train has come, and the train starts moving. And he runs after the train, but he doesn't get the train. So now we will say that itni mehnat kia, and still he didn't get the train. After so much effort, you lost the train. So this is the matter of the person who does new things in religion. He's putting in all his effort. See, to do a bidah, you need to spend money. You need to take an off from your office. You need to put in your jazba. You need to put in your efforts. and after doing all of this you come to know on the day of judgment for who are it is something very sad so my dear brothers and sisters i invite all of you that we all should speak for islam and explain this concept the concept of following the sunna and not following the bidahs the innovation and we do all do dua to allah rabbil alamin that may allah rabbil alamin accept us for the service of his deen wa akhir dawana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin